Hello, every oh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> am I on? Am I on or am I on? I have no idea. Am I on? Oh my goodness. How are you? It is so nice to see you guys. I know that I'm not, I haven't been on on Thursdays because honestly, my energy after you teach a class and then after you do the radio has like, it's plummeted except for now and today and this moment and this very moment that I have is spending with you. I am just, I'm excited to be on. I'm excited to be with you. I just want to give you my gratitude and say thank you. Hello, Kim for being with me and learning about your chakras. Hi, Debbie. <clears throat> it's either one or two things go on. My nose only runs when I'm in the basement. Oh. And <clears throat> Stacy, thank you so much for the question. It was so weird that you and I were just like, we were just on the same, today has been the same page kind of thing. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Nikki. Um, I was just telling my husband, we have, uh, they had cats down here in the basement. We just moved in here like two years ago. And I keep finding out that my nose is running. I think I'm like allergic to these cats or something. Or my lipstick. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hi, Kim. So nice to see you guys. So really cool. First of all, I hope that you enjoyed the show and you um, saw the differences in you know, shamanic practices kind of session versus... Um, a regular sh a chakra balancing because they should not be overlooked either. It's just that if you're going to do like some heavy, deep work, then you want to do a shamanic practice. Um, so I've never been allergic to cats. I used to have a cat, but like, I don't know what's going on. I hope it's the lipstick. Hi, Stephanie. So nice to see you. Nate! Mwah! Hello. I was talking about you tonight too. So uh, there's different things, right? So the shamanic healing sessions and um, a regular, I keep saying regular, again, it should not be overlooked. Like chakra balancing is the shizzle. So if you guys haven't had one, you should really have one. It's just that if you're going to do like deeper work, then I would go into shamanism. And I find that shamanism is the best way, like their techniques to nip something right in the butt, right? So when people go and they're like talking it out, um, so, Stacy, that's an interesting question. Have you ever combined the two? I actually, hi, Kay Miller. I love you. I hope you're doing wonderful. Um, I, when I was doing my sessions, right, and I started everything organically, like there's nothing that I looked on the internet. I looked, like, I didn't have the language for it back in the day when I started. So, I would Google, like, magical hands, right? Reiki energy healing was not a thing <laughs> like you couldn't find it on the internet now it's like totally popular um but when i started it wasn't i couldn't google anything to find anything so i learned everything and when you're saying combine the two i was doing you know like soul retrievals and extraction processes um attachments i love working with dead people <laughs> so all of that came naturally to me and then I found out that there was actually a process of how people handle things with these techniques. So then I got curious, well, what are these techniques about? So yes, I do combine the two. Like when I do a chakra balancing session, which I want to tell you that I am locating a place. I just need her to sign the dot for me and I'll be working one Friday out of the month over in Forest Hill. So just to, just to put that out there, that I get to work one day of the month for sessions, for healing sessions. When I do a chakra balancing session, wherever it goes, it goes. Like, I don't ever say, oh, you know what? We have to change the session to a shamanic healing session, just to let you know. Like, when I am in motion and I am in your field, anything goes. So even though I call it a chakra balancing, if your dead relative is sucking the energy out of you and you can't breathe because of that, heck yeah, I'm going to send them to the light and decord everything. So I, I can't just go, well, guess what? We got to stop right now because that's a shamanic healing session. No way. Like that's how I got into all of this stuff. Hi, Katie. Um, hi, Rachel. Hi, Nancy. So I never, I never just stop to switch sessions. So if somebody comes in for a chakra balancing, whatever happens happens and there are days and i will be very honest where 
I would leave my studio and I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> like That was so mind blowing, you know? And I've had so many amazing experiences that they, they do, they literally blow my mind or somebody leaves and I'm like, I just took off 20 people off of them and they walk out the door feeling great. Now I have to deal with 20 people in my room, right? It's like, it's the regular life of an energy healer. And, ah, uh, thanks, Rachel. I mean, I find it so fascinating. There was, and I, I still have this one client, and every time, usually I see past lives, right? I would come up to her, her face, and your face will change if there's a previous life influencing this life. And I was in her field, and she kept resorting to a younger skin and looking like she was 16. And I couldn't figure it out. And every time I would go over to her and I would scan her, hi, Charles. Oh, okay. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I was going to tell you a story. But every time I would scan this woman and she looks 10 years younger, 20 years younger on me, I kept staring at her like, why does she look so young to me? I'm not seeing a past life. I must have done sessions with her for a year and a half. And then she says, I didn't want to tell you this, like, not that she didn't want to tell me this, but she didn't find it relevant that she was adopted and her name got changed. And I was like, wait, wait a minute, how old were you? And she said she was 10. And I was like, okay, now I understand why I'm healing you at this age. So I didn't like just stop everything. I kept looking at her like, what am I supposed to be learning here? Why do you look so young? How is this happening? It's amazing stuff, but you're not taught it. That's the thing that drives me crazy. Like there's not, there's not this book that you go in for energy healers and it's like, by the way, you might be having somebody fly on your table or people shake, right? They shake a lot when they're on my table because they're releasing energy or they're releasing spirits that are attached to them. Pick your battle. It depends on which one, but you'll that's what I'm saying. Like everybody's different, <laughs> but a lot of people laying on my table, all of a sudden their feet will shake or they'll get so light. If you have like a session every single week, which I've done a few times with people and I couldn't understand why they kept coming back and kept coming back, their energy body gets so light. And then all of a sudden their, their hands are like flying up and it's, it's amazing. It is just amazing. So I enjoy it and I've done it for a very long time, but every time I go into session, I never know what to expect. So I just keep an open mind because even if my intention is chakra balancing, we might be healing a past life. We might be talking to your mother because she needs to process stuff. We might be talking to, you know, your belief system and releasing something. So I never, I never know what we're going to deal with. Anyhow, in short, I don't cut anything off. <laughs> so I don't say, okay, we have to go into a shamanic session. I just do what I've been taught for so long. And I've only been taught for my spirit team, which sometimes, uh, I don't know if I should really tell you guys this, but there's there's been times when people are on my table and I turn around and I'm like, what the hell is this, guys? Because... I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, what is this? And I'll turn around and I will literally yell at my team while somebody is nicely laying on the table because I'm kind of like, what's going on here? Until I understand, until I get like the information. And then I'll turn back and be like, okay, let me roll up my sleeves and let's do it. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. So I like it. I like my job a lot. And I will be doing uh, sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions once out of the month, but I really want to teach people how to do what they're capable of doing because there's so many healers out there. Like you guys can all do this stuff and it's just, it's amazing and it's magical. So I hope in short that my whole entire radio session just like rounded that up for you of my work. Um, it's, it's fascinating stuff. Like once you start diving into it, it's really fascinating. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope I answered your question and told you a little bit more than you probably needed to know. You never know what you're going to get. Nikki, it's so true. Like, I literally turn around and I'm like, hello, can you help me out here? What is this? 
Um, <clears throat> my son bought, sorry, oh gosh, hold on, paragraphs, okay, my son bought and his girlfriend's dad's toolbox, oops, going out to the laundry and I invite my phone, he had a lot to say to his daughter, yes, so that's the reason, like, <clears throat> oh, yay, I'm, I am doing podcasts, so I actually, I, I'm only doing six more radio shows. So just to give you guys a heads up, I really wanted to spend my time in another direction. So I'm going to do podcasts more because I talk to myself a lot and I'm really good at that. And um, I'm going to stop doing the radio in August. So August 1st. So I will be on for a few more weeks and then in August I'm going to uh, step out. So, <clears throat> um, oh, mediumship. So I actually didn't go into mediumship until I realized that that's what people needed to heal. And a lot of times what I do, what I do see uh, all the time is people who have not crossed over into the light, people who need to ask for forgiveness, people who are earthbound stuck. Those are the people that come to me all the time. If you have someone, and I hope that I'm not like not sounding sensitive, I'm extremely sensitive to this stuff. If someone who has crossed over by taking their life, I probably can get a hold of them because that's kind of my, my outlook, my lineage of where I can reach at. So when I'm doing a session, I started in mediumship because <clears throat> I can connect in. I, I've told you guys this story a million times of who killed Kenny. And this woman who came in and she's laying down on my table and I heard who killed Kenny, and I thought it was like a pod, uh, uh, like a joke, you know what I mean? Like that South Park, who killed Kenny? So I was like, oh, who killed Kenny? And she had her eyes shut, and she's like, they all know who killed Kenny. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And then I realized that there was a spirit with me. Then I started seeing things. I saw uh, a car backing up. I heard three doors shut. I saw fishing, so this guy was like going to fish walking down on, you know, like a pier, like a, it's a, a road. And then they had this cement on the side. So he's walking down on the sidewalk. And then I heard splash. And after I heard splash, I heard who killed Kenny. So I knew that these three people in this white Buick had intentions and did something to this guy, Kenny. So I'm telling her everything that I see. And she's like, yep, yep, that happened, that happened. She's like, but we don't know who it is. So I realized that I have this soul with me who is not over in the light. And my heart just sunk. Like, you guys need to help him. And I turned around. I'm going to cry. Like, it's one of the most, um, like, I don't know. My heart just aches for these people. <clears throat> and I turned around. And um, I was like, who can help him? Like, he's stuck. And, like, I'm getting mad at my team. I'm like, somebody has to help Kenny out. And when I said that, if you could visualize a hand pulling down into a dimension, I saw his grandmother pulling down her hand into a dimension and pulling his soul up. And his soul, oh, it's giving me chills. His soul was uh, turning like a big light. Like I don't know how else to say that. It, I didn't see a body going up into the light. I saw a hand going down and then I saw this big light force going up. And I just sat there in the room like, oh my goodness, Kenny's saved. He's okay. And so I'm talking into the nothingness and I turn around and my client's just laying on my table and she's like, okay, what's next? You know, like, And here I'm like, do you have any idea what just happened? But people come in and his, you know, his, her husband was like, I don't know what's wrong with her, fix her. So I started to do mediumship because it's how it helps people on the other side get over to the light because the light's only open for a certain amount of time. And it also helps her because she needs back her energy and she needs back her vitality. So they don't mean to, I want to say hang in your aura, but that's what they do. And then they start to take your energy and it's slow. It's not like they're feisty little people. They're, it's a slow thing because it keeps them alive well. So that's how I start. I was like, look, I want to do mediumship all the time if I can help every soul that I can. So then I got a lot of souls. 
<laughs> then the work, once you say, I'm going to do this work, then the work just comes in, right? So I help a lot of people cross to the other side. That's one of my things that I'm really good at. If you come in for a session, I will tell you who is deceased around you because it's going to help heal you. And when it helps heal you, it helps heal your chakras. Yes, it gives you closure and you can start manifesting and living life again. They can live life again. So that's why I do it. Um, that's just one of the things that happens in session, <laughs> right? I don't look for, well, I do. Like I, I do look for deceased people on you because I want to know. But I had, um, and sometimes if you have the excess amount, like this girl who came in and she said, wow, there's a lot of people in here. And I was like, there are a lot of people in here. And then I was like, how many people are here? And I heard 24. And then I looked at her and I said, how many people do you think's in here? And she said, 25. And I was like, oh, I missed one. One's hiding from me. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, oh, it's Owen. So I do. I send people to the light. Um, I hold a lot of space for them. I help people in hospice. I'll be wherever, wherever the good Lord asked me to be. That's where I go. Um, I was scared at first. Oh, yeah, that it's all alarming, right? That's why I want to, this is why I want to teach classes because everything that I had to go through is scary. It's not like there are so many days I've wanted to quit, right? I would just turn around. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, why is this person twisting on my table? What, what is this? And it would freak me out. So I would say, I want to quit. And I knew that I couldn't quit. Like they weren't going to let me quit. So I want to teach classes to help people when they go into this field of what to do, how to clear energy cords, how to clear out spirit attachments, um, the correct way to chakra balance because there are a different way to chakra balance, okay? Not everybody does it the same way. How to protect you as a healer because you can take on their processes. So you have to work with all of this stuff and that's, that's what I wanna do. That is where I want to be at, a teacher to help people heal. So let me go back up. Um, does your energy affect electronics too? I do not have that ability. I do not affect electronics. I can't turn them on. I can't do anything. <laughs> can't even get a spirit box to work. <laughs> Hold on, that just made me laugh. Do you find that the deceased people that hang around us on the earth plane are the ones we knew in this life before or past lives or both? Oh man, it's going too fast. Do you find the deceased people that hang around us on this earth? Um, both actually, both. So sometimes they are definitely from here and sometimes um, they're from previous ones that can help us. Or uh, I've seen when a new baby has come through and brought through an entity with it as well. And what happens in that case is that another being was able to come through at the same time, right? So who started off not in a good, not in a good place. Those are things that you can take care of, that you can see. So yes, I think that we are in one dimension and people, it's, it's easy once we figure out how to cross through in different dimensions. So past lives, they still exist. People who are in this life, soul contracts, all that good stuff, it's all around us. Go up higher. Oh, okay. Go up higher. Let me get back. Let me get back. Hi, Josephina. Go back up. Does everyone have the ability to do mediumship? I think you do. I think that we all have the gifts to open up, to see it's what our focus is, our intention is, how much are we going to practice. Like The other thing that a lot of people don't understand is that it does take practice. It's not like you just, I mean, some people wake up and they have the abilities that are wide open, but other people have to come up with a dictionary, come up with symbolism. What does this mean? I'm still learning what things mean, right? So if I see a rose, I'm like... Is it a rose that it's like a birthday or anniversary? Is your name rose? So I'm still getting down my dictionary or my symbolism. Do I think that everybody can do it? Absolutely. I think we all have intuition. We all have feelers. And if you want to connect, you can connect. It's just that it might take more work 
for one person to do it versus somebody else, depending upon how wide their chakra is and their belief system of things coming in to their imprints of saying, it's okay, it's not okay. Um, is it acceptable? Those things filter out as well. <clears throat> oh, Ed's here. Hey, Ed. I need to start hosting classes again. Aw, Nikki said, I've learned so much from you, Amber. You've helped me so much over the last few years by your guidance. I love seeing you live, by the way. I think you are fantastic. So. I laughed out loud. That's good. All right. Did I miss anything? Uh, we just had class about dimensions tonight and in, in the channeling intensive. That's, yeah, so dimensions are, they're so interesting to me because the first time I saw a dimension, right? Let's say, and I'll show you how to do it, right? If you guys want to creep yourself out and scare yourselves, you guys can do it. I lay in bed at night and it's pitch black, right? It's pitch black. And I have my eyes open and I'm staring into the nothingness. So not past, you're not going, you know what I mean? Like you're not looking at an object, you're staring at the air, you're staring at this stuff within here. And as you stare into this nothingness, I used to like hit my husband, do you see those dots in the air? They're red, they're blue, they're green. They're like little tiny speckles. So I told my husband, I'm like, I think I see atoms. <laughs> He's like, what? I said, you know how scientists talk about atoms and molecules? If you stare into the air, that's where they are. And he's like, what are you talking about, Amber? So one night I kept staring into the air because I'm like, why do they move? And what are they? And how does this work? And as I stare and stare and stare, an outline starts to take place. So I keep staring and I'm like, what is this outline about? And when you keep staring, it turned into a body, like a head and goes all the way down the shoulders and all the way down and it creates an actual person. So I feel, even though there's no book about it, <laughs> when I'm staring through, you're looking through dimension, just like they, them, other people on the other side are looking through dimension too. So you can actually see, and as these veils get thinner, as we get more open, as things become acceptable, we are giving ourselves permission to take down, you know, the, this isn't right. And we are able to have clarity and see through these dimensions. So yeah, if you keep staring at it, they can actually form into beings, into people. Um, yeah, I know you guys are gonna ask me, do I have bad things that come at me? I don't. I don't know what, well, sometimes I do, but I don't know what else to say. Like people say, well, I just saw the shadow figure that crossed here. I just saw this, or I just saw that. I don't get attacked by things that in the middle of the night. I only did one time when I was a kid. Um, so usually what I see or what I am called to or is called to me are people who are stuck on the other side. And that's what I see come through. And I'm like, why is this me? I'm standing right here by my bed. <laughs> like, what is this about? And usually they need help or they're assholes and we have to figure out why they're an asshole. And then I talk to them and they're like, you know, I just don't want to be here, blah, 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 blah. And then they go to the light. Like it's, it's just a process that you just have to keep going through and you get better and better. I think everybody has certain like gifts that they do. So like Charles, who is on here or was on here, He's a fantastic, what I call the spirit whisperer. So we have spirit boxes and he's at the first call paranormal and spirit boxes. When we go out, man, here I am on a spirit box. Is anybody here? How many people are here? What's your name? And I don't get anything like nothing is responding to me. I hate using the box. Like it doesn't work for me. Now, when he goes out, he's like, what's going on? And they all respond and I just don't understand it. And I think we all are very intuitive, but we all have specific avenues that we're just better at. 
And I think we're better at them because of our previous lives that are carrying over into this life. So I feel like I did the work as an energy healer in a previous life and all of a sudden I'm an energy healer. doesn't mean that you can't be an energy healer. It just means that I'm carrying knowledge from a previous life over to help. Does that make sense? I just skipped on there, but I always said it looks like white, white noise, snow on the TV, but muted. It's not as bright. That's right. It's like little dots everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. I get the knocking on my bedroom door in the middle of the night. So to me, that's invasive. <laughs> that is very invasive when they make, I mean, usually they make noises just to get your attention, just to say, hey, I'm here. Sometimes they need help. Sometimes whatever it is. Sometimes they're actually doing the same thing every day, you know, like on um, auto replay. If they did something in the same spot a lot, um, like Lunar Bay, when I work there, there's a entity, a guy, he's a little short farmer, who comes through and every night around 7.15, 7, it's 9.15, 9.30, I can hear the door lock, right? Every single night. And I think that's what his, you know, Ed, you're going to have to help me with that word. The thing that they like repeat over and over and it leaves an imprint in an area. I think that's what that is. So if you hear a knocking, I want to know one, is it because it's reoccurring from the energy? Like it kept occurring all the time. Is it new? It does it respond. Like how intelligent is the person that you're talking to? I start asking those type of things, but I find and I say that nobody can, nobody can come upstairs to my bedrooms. Nobody can come in my hallways. That's invasive. I'm in the basement. I do all my sessions here. It's open. Like, what am I supposed to do about that? But I would just ask questions. That's all. Ed says, dimension has been very intriguing to me as of late. I love that. Are you going up into the ET world? Where are you, Mom? It's bedtime. Um, oh, we were just talking about the the dots in the air and the the dimensions that go on. You can go through a lot of dimensions. Like it's not just us. You know how they say that heaven's not up, hell's not down. It's almost like if you're thinking about dimension all through here, that's what it is. So I always thought heaven was kind of like. Um, you know, in Greece, when they walk up the stairs and everybody's singing and they go up to the heaven. And then I was like, well, why is everybody here? Right? What, why is this? And it's because dimension is through our thin air here. But once we have all of our belief systems down, I think we're going to be able to attune to it a little bit easier. It is. It's cool stuff. It's very cool stuff. Like layers. Very good. I like that word, layers. Um, we were talking about that in shamanism tonight, like you would take a problem and you would go down the layers, like each layer. And every time something came up that triggered you, you would find out your belief system and you go through the layers of it. So it's pretty cool. I finally told it to stop and I haven't heard it again. I said, I, once I tune in my mediumship skills, we can talk. Well, and that's the other thing. Like a lot of people are afraid to do mediumship, right? They're afraid to do mediumship because they're afraid of the unknown. And once you get past that fear that you're not scared, oh my goodness, it opens up so many doors. It's kind of like when I was in my healing sessions, every time I go into a healing session, I feel like I'm in school. Like, what are we going to learn today? I'm open to whatever I'm going to receive. And when you say that to the universe, the universe gives you a lot of stuff <laughs> so that you learn that day. So that's how I feel about, like, I don't like to work in the, in the, fear mode, you know, like I can't open up or talk to people on the other side because they're just people on the other side. And after you start talking to them, you'll find that some of them are rude. Some of them are nice. Some of them are mean. So you kind of just make your way. It's just kind of like walking out in public, <laughs> right? Well, don't like that person. Do like that person. It's a vibration. And that's how everybody is categorized. Everybody has a different vibe. So when you're tuning into somebody, you're tuning into their vibration. It's just cool stuff in general. So I was going to do readings, but I can't do readings because it's already 10 o'clock. 
just like earth. That's how I always look at it. I'm like, well, there's people on the other side who are mean, but there's people here on earth who are mean too, right? Until we can all make that decision collectively to up our vibration and, you know, just manifest. And I like all that cool stuff. <clears throat> Years ago, I saw an outline of a man and inside was all red. So Joni, let me tell you a funny story. There's this guy who came in for a session, really attractive guy comes in for a session, a little bit older, a little bit older than me. And he's very charismatic, right? So he has this personality. He's just like, hey, hi. he's just very nice, open kind of person. Gets down on my bed and I go to scan him. Now I see colors. I have seen colors my whole life ever since I was little. I always see colors. They always mean stuff to me. And as I'm looking at him, I see red. Oh my goodness. And he's the only person that I've ever seen this much red about. So we have red all through here, all through here. I looked at his chest and I'm like, what the heck is this red? So when we do, um, you know, like color therapy, red can mean love, red can be uh, sex, Red can be passion. So red stands for a lot of different things. And I'm looking at his energy and then I logically go, well, maybe he's manipulative. Maybe I don't like that energy. Maybe he's angry. Maybe red stands for anger. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do today? Right? What's going to happen? So I got down to his root chakra and it turns out that this man is like a millionaire. So he has so much money and so much abundance, and that's all he focuses on, that his whole entire aura was red. Like it was his abundance, okay? So after I learned that, then I was like, hmm, you know, it, it's a teaching that opens up my book a little bit more. You just write it down. Well, red can also mean money. And he told me, so he's in Switzerland. He went back to Switzerland, and he would send me crystals. And he said in Switzerland, they actually leave crystals outside their door and they do like a trade, right? So you would go to somebody's house and there would be a box of crystals and you put in a crystal and then you take a crystal. So he started to mail me all these different crystals. But anyhow, he turned out to be a millionaire. He makes coffee machines. <laughs> of course, he's a millionaire. Everybody needs coffee. But that was his thing. So just because you see red, right? You see colored red on somebody, then you go inside yourself. What does that mean? Does that mean anger? Does that mean love? Does that mean manipulation? Does that mean, you know, too much passion? Like, what is that red? And then from there, you create your own dictionary. So, yeah, it's cool stuff. It's good stuff. It's stuff you learn. <laughs> so anyhow, I don't mean to jump off without doing any readings, but I do have to get my kids to bed. I will tell you the good news. Take your glasses off tonight. I need them to read. <laughs> like It's just the way it is. So I will tell you that, um, did he send you a coffee machine? No, I wish he did. I love coffee. Um, so what I would tell you is just to be open to energy, right? Open to receiving things. Good night, Laura. And, um, you know, just have fun with all this stuff. I think it's really cool and really neat. For the next seven Thursdays, I'm not teaching a class. So that means that I can come on after the radio. But then in August, August 1st is my last radio show. And you will see me doing podcasts more because, again, I like to hold conversations with myself when I'm not, when I'm not expected to. Like I'm expected to every Thursday night have a conversation, right? But in Podcastville... I just like to talk to myself and come up with stuff. So good thing. So you guys will see that change coming up through the summer. All right. I will see y'all next. Look, you can see my pretty face. I will see you guys next, uh, next Thursday. And if you ever have any questions, just send me an email. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll talk to you guys later. Good night.